Hey, what's up guys? We're uh, underneath the Demonator. Just about to give it its first oil change before I head out on another big adventure here. And I uh, thought you guys might be interested in seeing just how I pack up the uh, Gladiator and uh, some of my thoughts about arranging cargo and the storage configuration. And I gotta take the seats out to make room inside the cab. And I'll show you guys uh, one of my favorite mods so far that I've done to this. It's been working out really great, but First I gotta get the oil changed and uh, I think this is the highest oil drain plug I've ever, ever had to use. Hmm. This might uh, increase the chance of saving my driveway. I feel like uh, not bringing paper towels with me was a mistake. All right, try to get out from underneath here. All right, now I have to get to the oil filter, which uh, oil filter sits right above our axle, drag link, steering stabilizer. I feel like it's gonna let some oil out when I loosen it off. If I can loosen it off, let's see. It's already starting to turn, so I know this won't be a hard oil filter to get off. I just have to figure out how I'm gonna catch the oil. I've got a funnel here. Hold this like this. Try to direct any oil down to a catch pan here below us. But I'm gonna need both hands. We got it. Oil on the axle housing, which is going to be much easier to clean up than everything else. I guess I should have brought the other filter first. That would have been smart. So the gin ginger tells me that the oil filter is the same for the Hellcat motor or the Demon motor as a two liter turbo Jeep engine. Who would have thought? Don't drop this in the oil pan below. If you're wondering what this hose is coming off the, the oil filter connection, it's an oil filter bypass that extracts the oil out of the engine and runs it through a cooler to help keep the supercharged Hemi cool. All right, picked up some oil from White Rock Dodge when I was over there. We are running Pennzoil Ultra Platinum 0W40 synthetic with the SRT logo on it and we need between eight and nine liters of this so I've got enough for two oil changes there we have to run a little bit more than normal uh, a normal demon engine because we've got that oil bypass filter cooler uh, oil bypass cooler on the engine so it's between eight and nine liters so we'll start with start with eight check the oil see where it's at start it up if it's high enough, and then uh, see if we need to put any more in. Okay, we've got seven liters in. Let's just uh, check and see where it's at. Make sure we. Got the right information about how much we need to put in here. It's a long, a weird dipstick. It's like a roller coaster. Okay, we are just below the safe mark. So I'm gonna put one more liter in, start it up, let it cycle through that oil cooler, and then I'll check it out after. So I think we'll probably lose a bit of oil. Well, I didn't pre-fill the filter because it's at a weird angle. And we're gonna suck some into the uh, oil cooler. I guess, I'm guessing that's how that works. A lot of oil. If you're, and if you're wondering uh, how much this oil change cost, I mean, Pennzoil, you can get deals on it. Um, I think this was about 13 bucks a liter Canadian at the dealership with a bit of a discount times nine. 
You guys do the math. We're just above the safe mark, so let's give this a start up after seven liters and check it after that. And not forget to put the oil cap back on. <laughs> I think I just said after seven liters, after eight liters. We've got eight liters in here now. All right, let's go find the keys and fire it up. All right, let's see how that's doing. And then uh, we'll start loading up the Jeep and I'll show you uh, just kind of how I'm configuring things with Gladiator set up versus, well, we're not using the Wrangler right now. So one thing I found quite frustrating with the, the Gladiator, the back seats, because I had no idea until I bought this, which is kind of stupid on my behalf, that the seats, that's how they fold down. Not flat like a Wrangler, or they fold up like that, and you got the uh, bed space. So I think I'll take one of the seats out so I can easily get my fridge in here and some other stuff. Okay, looks like we are about half a liter low based on how much we got by putting a full liter in last time. So we were just, oh, well, it's dripping now, but we're just below the safe mark. Safety first, right? So we'll put a half liter in, check it, should be good. Now the oil change is done. Let's pull the back seat out. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, four or six bolts per side, but in the newer models, they've switched from Torx to E-Torx. So this is a 14 mil E-Torx, which uh, you're gonna need to remove these funny looking bolts here. So there's one here, here, and then there's two more over there. And if you've already moved, removed the plastic like I have, that's all you'll need to take out. Otherwise there's a plastic piece holding the two, two seats together. And then there's four more bolts on the other side. I don't know, I kind of want to take the other side out but at the same time, if I just take this side out, then. Maddie can sit on the other side anytime she wants to come with us. But I do need some room for a fridge, and since the heat from the demonator killed my fridge last time on a road trip to Moab, the heat from the exhaust under the floor pan killed my little 28 liter Dometic because there's so much heat underneath it. So I'm gonna fire in, I don't know, maybe one of the, maybe this Iceco fridge. See how that fits back there. So I decided to uh, put the EcoFlow Glacier back here instead. For now, it's way easier to get through the doors, takes up less space in the back, and the lid doesn't hit the roof when we open it because the lid opens this way. Um, I've got some pool noodles under it because we get a lot of heat coming up from the floor because of the exhaust and transmission of the uh, supercharged Hemi. Um, and that's what cooked my CFX 28 Dometic fridge. And then just trying to level it out with a two by four for the moment. But I don't know, I really like it on the back, back here. My problem is I don't have any power back here yet. I need to run some power so that I can keep the fridge charged. Uh, I guess I could just run it off its own battery because the Glacier has a battery built into it and put it back here. And uh, that'll give me more room inside the Jeep. But we've still got to fill up our decked box. Oh yeah, we don't need extra springs, but really, really been enjoying the decked box. Um, you know, the, they come out only this far and you have this much more space to go. So probably to here, but you can get a lot of stuff in there. And I put my tools in the back, less used stuff in the back of this one, quick access stuff in the front. And I really like that I can leave all my gear in here, close the tailgate, and it's secured. I don't have to worry about it getting stolen. Oh, those are heavy. Get these big springs out of here. So that's been one of the surprising favorite mods on the Gladiator that I uh, really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the truck box, but 
I think the only complaint I have about the deck is there's not enough cargo tie downs on it. It'd be nice if there's some anchor points. So that when I put something across the back, I have somewhere to easily tie straight down to rather than moving the uh, anchor points that come with the trail rail system around. But uh, it's been really awesome. And you can put a ton of weight on on the decked box. I don't know what it's rated for a lot. Uh, way more than I would consider needing. Way more than a 40 inch spare tire. And some f traction boards. I was gonna say fake Max tracks. They're just uh, some knockoff traction boards, which have done me really well so far. You know, just uh, no name traction boards. I pull them out when I need them. I've got them tied down with a strachet on top and then a really thick ratchet strap for the, the spare so it doesn't bounce around. I'm gonna get all my gear back in here, my tools, my jack. Uh, and then all my cooking stuff so I can easily pull it out. I'm hoping we have no rain this weekend because I don't have an awning on the uh, truck yet. If you have any suggestions on awnings, let me know. I've got my eye on a couple of new ones um, that I want to look at. But if you guys have some awning suggestions, I really like ones that are coming out that have a hard case. That are quick and easy to open. I don't have to mess around with zippers. And that are small and compact. I don't want a big fat cannon down the side of the Jeep. Um, I don't know, 270 awnings are kind of handy, but uh, in the past on the JL, the straight out six and a half by eight foot awning from a, a or B, I think it is that I have on it, has worked great. It's just a little tedious to set up and put away. So, all right, let's get this packed up. And I'll show you just kind of what this looks like when we're done and whether or not I decide to keep the fridge in the back or move it over here. If I move it back here, then I have to try to strap my fuel cans around the spare tire, which they do fit, but I don't have any good mounting points for them. So that's sort of the, the downside. Okay, after playing uh, Jeep Tetris for a little while, basically landed on keeping the fridge back here for now. That way I can plug it in to an EcoFlow Delta power system to keep it charged and other things charged and the battery in this charged. We've got the attic, which I've uh, taken my, what is it, Thermorest Mondo King bed and rolled it all together with my uh, Zen Baby sleep system. Um, there's a whole rundown of this over on my Patreon page if you want to check it out from the uh, Moab trip. Um, this new sleep system that I've been kind of playing with and uh, it's really comfortable, really lightweight, really warm. But then we've got <laughs> all the pillows which take up almost as much room. So let me show you around the back kind of what I've been playing around with in the decked boxes. Um, I've got my Lifesaver jerry can hanging out just right... For now tied down to the top of the rack i'm not 100 percent sure what i want to do for mounting to that but it's actually pretty accessible which is okay um in here i've got my whole kitchen bag which kind of flips right in there really nicely some ziploc baggies i've got a portable heater to bring up into my tent if i need some heat because it's super cold i should probably clean that filter off to be more efficient um nespresso coffee maker back here because that's essential Got to make our coffee and I've got two stoves at the moment. This one is, uh, you know, I've been using this one for a while. Jet Bowl Genesis. Got a couple spare cans, fuel for it, oil for the engine in case we need it. The sprayer to attach to the Lifesaver jerry can so we can use it because it's pressurized. Um, but we've got two uh, stoves. This one that's just gas and this is an electric uh, induction cooktop, which you can see how much less room that takes up. I want to try this out because I've got the EcoFlow Delta Max, which is 2000 watt hours. This is maximum 1800 watts, so it should run for over an hour from a fully charged Delta Max, uh, Delta 2 Max. That's at full. 
So I'm hoping, thinking, you know, maybe for quick cooking, I can just plug this in. I've got a frying pan hiding underneath the jet boil and I can cook easily without having to set up gas, bring gas. And that's one less potential consumable that I need to bring on trips because if I just need the occasional stove, look how much space this takes out. Plus I've got consumables versus that just slides in there. We need a pan anyways, and we can plug it into our portable power system. But yeah, um, got my new hatchet from Gerber Gear, which is uh, really nice looking hatchet, but it's got a little trick up its sleeve here. This little button right here, push that. Some paracord in here, and this is the size of a lighter. So we can actually put a little Bic lighter in here. And the ax actually has this as well, but it has a second chamber. So you could put some fire starting material, lighter, paracord, you've got your ax. So it's kind of a nice little all in one in case you lose or forget your lighter, or your lighter runs out. You can uh, keep one stashed in here. So I'm gonna find a lighter to put in there when I stop for some fuel. But uh, yeah, over on this side, I've uh, decided to leave the seat in for now, I think if I can get away with leaving it in all the time, then I don't have to um, you know, be putting a seat in and out to have my wife and daughter in here at the same time. But we've got my uh, gear bags, toiletries, rain gear, bug gear, all that kind of fun stuff. And then right here, I'll just put my bag with clothes and stuff. And down there, I'm gonna slide the Delta II Max in once it's finished charging, and then I can charge it off the inverter using the uh, EcoFlow's uh, converter from AC to DC that they ship with the the Glacier, which actually works really well for charging up the uh, portable power systems. But that way we can charge off the inverter because a lot of these um, with the lithium ion phosphate batteries need a pure sine wave inverter to charge and not a modified sine wave inverter, which is what most vehicles have. Definitely was what the Jeeps have. So we can now charge off of AC with that. So I'm just chopping this up. I picked up a new thermocell. I don't know if you guys use these. I've heard a lot of good things about them and we're getting into bug season. Mosquitoes and black flies and stuff like that. I don't know if they work on black flies, but it's got like a I don't know, 20 foot radius or something like that. This little pack, this is like 35 bucks, but it goes for 40 hours. So whatever, a buck an hour. So I'm gonna give this a try. I bought the USB powered battery one. I'm gonna give that a whirl, I don't wanna have the gas one. And while we're on the topic of portable power stations, coming up is the huge Amazon Prime Day sale. Um, EcoFlow has tons of stuff going on for major discounts, especially their previous generation models. Um, so if you're looking for some deep discounts, I think like the Delta One Max is like $1,500 off retail. Um, but I'll put some links down in the description and pinned comment if you wanna go check out some of the uh, crazy Amazon Prime Day sales that EcoFlow's um, having with several of their portable power stations and accessories and all that kind of stuff if you're looking to uh, add some portable power to your Jeep as well. Go check it out. Link in the description and pin comment. I now have the Delta II Max down on the floor. So I've got some USB cables ready for charging devices and drones. We'll put the drone batteries in here. I've got an extra AC plug. Since this is charging off of technically 12 volt DC, although it's plugged into the inverter with a converter that came from the glacier, that means I can keep my AC port free. And when I have, you know, shore power extension cords, I can top this up. And since this has two 12 volt ports in it, I'm gonna run a little extension or something so that I can easily connect solar panels to it without having to unhook anything from here. And then this is also running the fridge, but the Glacier has a built-in battery. So if something happens to this, boom, we're not worried, but I don't know guys, I'm really on the fence on Gladiator storage and where to put things. Oh yeah, and I hang that over my rear view mirror because I drove away once with my extension cord connected. That was interesting. Um, but, uh, I don't know, I'm really struggling to figure out the gear setup for a Gladiator versus a Wrangler. Um, when you've got too large of a spare tire, a 40 or a large 37 or 38 or anything, you gotta put it in the bed, you can't put it underneath. Um, so that takes up a bunch of space. If you don't have a topper, you know, like the GFC camper or 
There's a couple other ones. Um, really limits what you can put in the back because of, well, people stealing it. Um, my rack is lower, so I don't have as much height. And, you know, I can't put things that could get wet or dirty back there. They have to go inside the cab. So I can't put like, you know, my fridge back here would be kind of ideal. Connected to the EcoFlow, that would be kind of cool. And then um, if we had a taller topper, I could put the jerry cans on top of the spare and stack them on there. And that would basically leave my entire interior open. We could still use the decked box. I think, you know, like the Gladiator for overlanding without the topper, I don't know. I'm gonna talk to Matt from Ozark Overland because he's got a pretty good setup and he does a lot of overlanding. Front seat is still, no, we're not bringing Matty, so we'll take this out. The front seat is still empty because I need to put my camera, I have my camera box and my camera bag going front so I have access to all my cameras while I'm out. But if you have a passenger with you, I've still got room up front. Oh, so <laughs> I've got gear under the driver's footwell still. So I'm really, really trying to figure out the Gladiator. But at the moment, my conclusion is the Wrangler is better for overlap because you can put the, the spare tire on the back. You don't have to have it in the front or in the trunk, in the trunk. But, you know, essentially we can put the spare tire on the back like we have, free up all this space. If you go watch last week's video, I really like how the Ginger set up his Wrangler with that compact fridge slide from Goose Gear with the cutting board underneath. And then, oh, it's locked. He's still got a tailgate cutting board and room for all your stuff or a drawer system on the other side. And then he's got that cool shelf up here, which you could put your sleeping gear like I have or you know, rearrange with some of your tools and recovery gear a little bit. But the nice thing about the Wrangler is when you want to fold the seats down, you don't have to take them out to get flat space, right? You just fold them flat. And if you need that extra room, it's right there right away. We'll see. I love the Demonator. I mean, the supercharged Hemi is absolutely bonkers. It's super fun to drive, but I'm gonna have to give this a few more trips, consider what gear and options we're using, but you know, you basically, especially the 2024 Wranglers with the new axles, basically just buy a new one. You don't need to swap anything. You can put 38 inch wheels and tires on it with a small lift. You don't need to buy a topper or a decked system. You don't have to take your seats out. Hmm. Just, uh, and then all the other same upgrades. I mean, you still need shocks and you still need to buy wheels and tires and a winch and some lights, obviously. Yeah, we'll go on a few big trips here. See what we think of the Gladiator. But I think, you know, the Gladiator really needs some sort of topper on it, on the back and then put your rooftop tent on top of it to really make it functional for overlanding, in my opinion. Um, so that's what I think so far. But I mean, you're talking, you're paying a premium for the Gladiator already. You gotta lug your spare tire around in the bed. You gotta spend another six, five, six grand for a topper or more if it's a topper and tent built into it. We'll see, I don't know. Let me know, what do you guys think down in the comments? Gladiator or Wrangler? I've kind of got the builds of both extremes. Uh, certainly for rock crawling, Wrangler is where it's at, 100%. But for overlanding, camping, truck camping, I'm going to have to take some trips and mess around a little bit with the Gladiator before I'm sold on the idea because I still think, I still think the Gladiator is, or <laughs> Gladiator, I still think the Wrangler is a better overland platform. So we'll see. I'm going to get the rest of my stuff together and head over and catch up with Sean and I'm going to daily vlog this whole trip. We're going to be out for three days and we got a little bit of a surprise at the end. So stay tuned for those videos. Should be a fun little series. We got a cool spot we're going to head to here. Do some British Columbia truck camping. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe guys because I upload all the time and I'd love to see you coming back here. A huge percentage of you guys aren't subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.